if you're gonna go motorcycle camping, you're gonna want somewhere to sleep. So I'm gonna share my sleep system here. So the idea behind the sleep system is to be able to sleep comfortably for days on end while traveling on a motorcycle. So just like ultralight hiking, all the same ultralight philosophies apply when it comes to motorcycle camping. So this is a REI Bug Net 2 or Bug Hut 2. Um, it simply takes two poles and it pops up, it's freestanding, and it has a bathtub basin, but the rest of it is entirely mesh. And the philosophy behind this is that it maximizes ventilation. So even in a light breeze, you're going to have air passing through the tent. By having air passing through the tent, it takes away moisture with it. If there's any rain fly surrounding the tent, everything inside the tent will become increasingly saturated with moisture day after day. Eventually, that equipment will not be able to keep you warm. So, and that could be a bad situation. So, since I'm traveling with a CPAP, um, there are some additional considerations. But the basic system is, with the bug hut, that is the shelter. If, I, if there is moisture or dew or rain, I'll simply fly a cell nylon tarp over it to keep it off. So inside, I, I usually wear a wicking layer, which is a ultralight like polypropylene or something like that uh, on top and bottom. And that kind of does the same job as wearing a, a, of having sheets or a sleep sack, but it's a lot more comfortable and practical because it's on me. Um, secondarily, I have a, a ultralight quilt. So this is made out of still nylon material with two layers of insulation inside. Um, so that will keep me warm. And it's only in the top half. In the bottom half, I use a thermarest. I have a thermarest pillow and a pillow case cover. For the, in case it gets cold, I also have a beanie hat, which I put on, and also a fleece that I can zip up and put on to keep myself warm, and a pair of socks is always handy. So for the CPAP system, I have a mask, which was one of my old masks. And as long as you keep them clean and dry, they can last a long time when they're not being used every night. So this is a, um, and this CPAP machine is an old CPAP. It's a respironics unit. And one nice thing about this particular unit is you can run it on 12 volt car power. So I just have this adapter here, which is a, 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter barrel plug, which plugs directly in. And then from there, I have it go to an Anderson power pole connector, where I go through a watts up meter, where I can keep track of my current voltage and my energy utilization per night. And you can see that this CPAP runs 62 watt hours per night, or about four and a half amp hours. So to power that, I have a Bieno a lithium ferrophosphate battery. Uh, this is a 144 watt hour battery. It's 12 amp hours. So this has the ability to run this CPAP machine for over two nights reliably. Um, it could probably go three nights, but um, I don't really see a need to do that. Also in my tent, I carry bear, sp uh, bear spray and a flashlight. This is a Surefire flashlight, just because I'm camping in bear country and also carry a Nalgene collapsible 16 ounce canteen to save me one trip to the trees in the middle of the night. And that could be quite valuable. So that is my sleep system. And this particular system has worked for motorcycle camping to Alaska, to California, and across the state of Washington. So it works pretty well. So I talked about the tent. So this tent packs down really small. I can bungee it on the side of the bike. This is the REI Bug Hut 2. It served me well for many years. But key is this other thing, which is the footprint that I use. So this is a piece of kite Tyvek. It's actually used for, as you guessed it, making kites. Um, it's very strong and it weighs almost nothing. So if you're going for a really light kit for camping, 
it's a pretty good way to go because it is it does act as a vapor barrier protects the bottom of my tent from getting holes poked in it for the most part and it can fold down very very small so the entire thing is actually smaller than the size of a diaper when you fold it I choose to roll it a little bit long wise so I could just slip it in with my tent and it adds almost no weight and almost no volume so that is my tent no discussion of traveling even motorcycle traveling with a CPAP machine would not include a little discussion about power systems and how to keep things charged. So I have two ways of keeping things charged here. One is that this uh, Biano Power lithium iron phosphate battery, it's a 12 volt battery, which operates and charges at the same voltage as my vehicle. So um, I can simply, you know, connect it via this charger which will take anything up to 15 volts and output 12 volts at 1.8 amps. So this is enough to charge the battery without the battery causing a short circuit of the motorcycle's electrical system. In order to compensate for the 1.8 amps on the motorcycle is I went to a LED headlight in order to reduce the current draw on the motorcycle because um, the, the stock headlight draws about five amps. So by going to LED, I freed up more than enough electricity to run this charger to charge my battery while I'm, I'm actually riding from point A to point B. So one thing that I always keep on this is I have this uh, watts up meter. Currently you, you can see it's running 13.15 volts. I can see how many amp hours that I've drawn and how many watt hours that I've drawn from it. So this is a, a really useful um, thing to have. I also have a four panel solar panel which puts out 30 watts and that's what it is currently charging the battery um, although not very well because I have shadows of branches which on a monocrystalline cell kind of blocks output pretty well so that's not so good but anyhow on to other systems so one thing that you'll notice is I have Anderson power, power pole connectors on everything so these are better than your typical cigarette lighter connector or those um, other 12 volt connectors, which just don't work so well. So I'll, I'll put these on pretty much anything that'll sit still long enough. And the Biano battery comes with the power poles on it. So another thing that I have here is I have an adapter to a cigarette lighter plug for the following reason. So for a number of other electronics that I might carry like this, Verizon uh, LTE jetpack for bandwidth or my cell phone. I will carry this little charger which can output uh, two and a half amps and I will carry the cables to go from it to each device. But one thing you'll notice is that all the cables that I carry are short. So that makes for much less of a tangle in my tank bag when I'm dealing with them. So I try and go for 18 inches or 12 inch cables, the shortest cables I can get, just to make things more manageable. So you can see I could plug these in, hook them all up, and then I could plug them into the output of the battery, even while this battery is being charged. And there are some devices that don't like intermittent connections when charging. So this gives the charger a constant supply of energy from the battery and the battery can get charged from the solar as you know as the sun permits. So as branches pass over or not the battery doesn't really care. It will soak up, soak up electricity while it can but in the meantime it will reliably charge all the electronics which require a very constant uh, voltage that's, that's predictable. So on the motorcycle itself, I have spliced in this Anderson power pole connector, which goes directly to the battery. So I can charge while in motion from point A to point B. And you can see on the front, here's the LED headlight, which I use to 
free up enough electricity to run an auxiliary charger without adding any demands to the motorcycle's electrical system. In order to power the CPAP machine, one, I had to make sure that I had a CPAP machine that could run off vehicle power directly without a transformer for the maximum efficiency. So this is a Respironics Remstar Pro M series. Um, it's a little old, but you can run it off 12 volts and you can get connectors for it. That's really important because so many of the modern CPAP machines, um, you're not going to be able to connect to it easily. So this is a 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter uh, connector, and this is the one that came with the CPAP machine. What I did was I simply cut the cable at about 18 inches, and I put on an Anderson power, power pole connector so I could hook it up to this equipment. So directly off the, what, the watts up, I can connect it and power the CPAP directly off of the lithium ferrophosphate battery. And that works great. You can hear it just booted up there. So this adapter cable was the missing ingredient enabling me to use the CPAP machine on the road in the most efficient way possible. So this is a lot smaller than carrying an inverter, a transformer, and all those other bulky things that you need to otherwise connect a CPAP machine while on the road. The tubing and everything I need. I leave the watts up connected um, just so I can monitor the voltage. And out of the side here, in the other side pocket, is the charger. So this is what will charge the battery off of the motorcycle's electrical system while in transit. And here is the Anderson power pole, which will plug directly into that adapter on the bike. So, and in the lid here is the solar panel, at which is pretty much the backup system. For the most part, charging off motorcycle and transit uh, generates enough power to charge all my electronics, as well as the CPAP battery to make sure it's fully topped up, ready to go um, each evening. So that is the entire system.